Hey guys, and welcome to something that is new for Marketing in the Madness. So these episodes are coming to you in collaboration with Madfest. As part of that collaboration, I am going to be interviewing some incredible female leaders, female founders, and men across the industry who are leading the charge and leading the change in our industry that will enable women to reach their full potential and address the long-standing inequalities that still exist, not just in the marketing industry, but across every single industry. So if you're interested in joining me and helping make the world a fairer, more inclusive place, then keep listening because today's episode is going to be a cracker. Hey guys, welcome back to Marketing in the Madness. And this is our very special episode, which we partner with Madfest on, which is all around female leadership and how us amazing females could and should be getting ahead in our careers. So I'm back with the lovely Laura Thornley. Didn't say Thornley in the last episode, so I'm saying it now. So the lovely Laura Thornley, who heads up EMEA Field Marketing at Contemptful. And we were talking earlier, I'm going to get straight into the episode. Um, we were talking earlier about, oh gosh, things that we'd, we'd wish we'd known or told ourselves in our 20s that would help us now. So I'm going to come straight to you on that. Tell me, what would you, if you were going back to your 20 year old or 20 something year old self, what would you as a woman in business today tell yourself or the, what advice would you give yourself as that younger 20 year old woman starting out in her career? Firstly, you absolutely deserve a seat at this table without question, because I think I've always had that internal narrative. And to be quite honest, you, you know, it, I'm almost almost 40. It's not gone away. It's still there. But I'm able to challenge it a bit more. I think, you know, early on in my career, I used to believe that my skill set wasn't quite the right fit for business. It was like, oh, it's too, too fluffy. You know, I hate that term now. I hate it because, you know, actually my skill set is what's got me to where I am now. And I think will continue to accelerate my career. So I would, yeah, I would tell her like, you're okay. You're okay. You deserve a seat at this table and lean into those skills because they will really, really help you to, you know, propel your career to help others. And yeah, I hope that people in their twenties can look at my example um, that we discussed in in another pe podcast episode and and see that and see yeah you know actually I, I can do this too I think you we've discussed this before you've kind of said something that really resonated with me previously which is we look at our male counterparts as examples and especially because you know let's be honest in our 20s because we're I mean I'm a bit older than you sadly I'm already in the 40s bracket but it was predominantly men in the room it was you know most of my bosses I hate the word bosses as well but most of my bosses were men so you see them behave present ideas talk in a certain way and I guess we thought that we should do the same. And I can tell you now, I have done so much better since I forgot all of that and went, do you know what, I'm gonna shop as Katie as the, you know, slightly chattier, all over the place, female, you know, nurturing person that I am, but, and the inquisitive person, because that's, you know, I would ask, I always remember getting called out when I was in meetings, like, oh, Katie always asks loads of questions, but actually they're really good questions that she's asking. And I wish I'd, I wish I'd done that more and been brave enough to not emulate what I thought I should be like, because there were men in the room, you know, being very corporate and me being a bit more feminine and a bit more fluffy and a bit more real. I think in today's world, even more so, that's really, really important. Hugely, hugely. And actually, I got feedback in a meeting that was predominantly all men. I think there may have been two females in the room. And I sat through the whole day listening to presentations and they were great. Um, but I always feel I have to dial myself down a little bit because I'm like, OK, you know, I'm a bit more en higher energy. And, you know, yeah, I just just kind of felt like that that isn't the way to be in business. Um, and someone gave me um, feedback and they said, oh, my gosh, I can't wait for your bit. You'll bring the energy. And it was honestly, it was the best thing that they could have said to me. I think, you know, I needed to hear that that people enjoy that and they appreciate that and you know, you don't have to dull yourself down. Yeah, I've spent far too much of my career trying to emulate males, as you say. But equally, 
you know, I've learned a lot from them as well. There's a, there are many males in, in my current role that I really look up to and get great advice from. I don't necessarily even think it's an issue created by men. I think it's actually something that we can challenge ourselves. Um, I think obviously, you know, there's a deeper conversation here about organizational structure and we could be here all day. But yeah, I think, you know, we just need to challenge that ourselves and lean into our male allies as well. Yes, I love that. I mean, again, we have spoken about this before. I think that the biggest that change that needs to happen is we don't just need those male allies, but we need them to stand up for us, yes. to be part of that change, to help us, you know, I guess, have the confidence to do things differently, to be brave enough to support us and celebrate us when, you know, and come to us and say, that was brilliant. You brought a different energy to the room. Like that's what we needed. Like, cause we do do that. There's a reason that we're all different, right? And not just, I'm not even just talking male, female here. Like everyone's personalities, how everyone shows up is different. So I think having men, you know, act like, I talk about this all the time, but having men act like activists for us and helping yes. us make that change and celebrating those mm -hmm. changes is also really important. Hugely, yeah, really couldn't agree more. You know, I think as I've said before, you want them to to be that voice when you're not in the room, yeah. you know, to continue it, be activists. You know, I've had some, some great advice off males throughout my career. Um, and actually they've been, they've challenged me as well and challenged my thoughts as a female and as a mother, you know, yeah. because I've spent a lot of my career feeling like I can't, I have to hide that side away, which is crazy. You know, it's the biggest part of my life. Yeah. But yeah, in business, it, it there's something that makes me hold back. And that's probably a wider conversation of, you know, I've had many comments over the years about things that make you feel you've got to shy away from that. But there's been, you know, males in business that, I see put the family first and it's great. This is what we want. We want them yeah. to actually do it, to to be the example, um, to say, no, nope, I can't attend that event. You know, it's a really Ugh. important time for my son at that point. So and yeah. prioritize like the amount of times I honestly I can empathize with this so much that I had missed my daughter's nativity because I had a pitch and like the pitch was I was, you know, head of new business and marketing, whatever at this agency and the pitch for some reason became more important than me going to see my beautiful daughter's nativity. And the same happened to me. A male boss of mine was like, Katie, it's your daughter's nativity. Fuck off. Just go. <laughs> like, you're not going to a pitch in London. Yeah. Someone else will go. But I had this like real fear, like, oh my God, I'm missing out if I don't mm -hmm. do the pitch. And I, it's like I didn't win it. Even though I've done all the work running up and yeah. the nurturing of everything, you know, running up to that pitch. It was this, this one with the nativity. I remember it. it was the Lawn Tennis Association, which we did win. I didn't need to be there to exactly. win it. I'd done yep. my bit, I, but I think we put so much pressure on ourselves mm -hmm. as women. Like we must do everything. We mu we can't go and go to the nativity because I've got to go to this pitch, which is crazy. Yeah. We feel like it's a sign of weakness when actually, you know, I would argue that the working mothers out there are flipping superheroes. You know, those ladies can multitask like no other. Oh yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I actually remember when I went off on maternity leave the first time, and a boss actually said to me she was like you're gonna be great because I, you know we 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 get our shit done yeah <laughs> we totally we, do our time management is second to none going off what you've just said there it's crazy actually that we need validation but we do yeah and i think that is the message to the males in the workforce of you know please do that please speak out yeah you know i've had somebody a really a, a senior a senior lady leader within the business actually sit down with me at dinner and say ask about my family and he was like, these are the golden years, you know, enjoy them. I really regret not embracing it at that time. And it's crazy that we feel like we need permission to do that, but it's just, it is the way of the world. So I think, you know, being activists and actually helping us challenge ourselves because we can be our own worst enemies, let's be honest. Sometimes we feel we've got to be everything to everybody. And if we're not at that pitch that, you know, we've put 98% of the work in and I must see it through, it's all, you know, it's gonna be terrible. But actually it was fine. It was yeah. fine and you got to see the nativity and I'm doing exactly the same this week. I'll be leaving an event to rush back 
and watch a dance show and at the end of this week that's the thing i'll be most proud of myself this week is that i've you know i've balanced that and the most important two people you know in my life are, are seeing me show up at work and do great things at work because that's important as well yeah you know i kind of always felt post maternity leave that i actually wanted to step up more mm -hmm. i had this weird thing of like you know, oh my gosh, well, if I'm away from my babies, I'm gonna flip and make it work. I'm gonna show them, you know, I want them to look up to me and go, wow, she did it. Now I fail on the daily, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. I forget homework, spelling, oh whatever. God, yeah. You know, the things at work because you're crazy, you're crazy busy. Just today, you know, I, I'm on a podcast today, but what people don't see is I had the tears this morning yeah. of don't do this, don't leave me. and gone to events where I've had to sleep on FaceTime. Oh boy, you know, it's really, really hard. And that goes on to kind of another point of I just think that these conversations are vital. Yeah. We need to be more honest about it. Yeah. Rather than our shiny like, <laughs> I'm here. Jazz hands. Yeah. We need to be honest. And I think this is, it helps just having these conversations like female to female of like, I see you. Yeah. It's bloody tough, you know, but I think when you know that somebody else is going through it, just it, it just gives you that extra fuel in the tank to keep on going. It kind of, in a weird sort of way, it makes you feel good because you're like, I'm not the only one. Yeah, exactly. I remember that, like, I mean, my daughter's nearly 16 now, but like trapping her into the car seat <laughs> and her screaming for me, like, I'm, need to, I'm gonna be late for work. But if work had just been like, don't worry, like if you're 10 minutes late because, because you're, you exactly. managed to have a yeah. calmer journey to drop mm -hmm. your daughter at nursery. So I do think there's things that, business leaders can do to help us Hugely. feel less pressured. Yep. Like not, if I showed up at 10 minutes work at late, it doesn't really matter. If that meant I could show up as a happier human, because I hadn't like had the most horrendous argument with my three-year-old trying to force her into a car seat. So I do think there's things that we can do as businesses. To massively, as well. yeah, massively. And I think seeing women in leadership roles as well, mm -hmm. I think that, I mean, that's challenged my internal narrative of what's possible you know, you kind of sometimes can really limit yourself because you're like, okay, well, I'm a mum now and it's really hard. The juggle's really hard. So I'm never going to be able to give 100%. But actually seeing female CEOs and oh. female CMOs and, you know, they will mess up too. They will have days where the balance is way out, way out of whack. And actually some great advice I once got from a female leader was there is no balance. It's a myth. You will never be balanced. Some weeks you will be giving like 90% to work and feel like the world's worst parent. And that's, those are the days where, you know, you feel like you've, you've fought, you're failing, you're missing things. And then it'll flip round, you know, you, you might end up with a child in hospital and then you go, you know what, I'm not a brain surgeon. Yeah. Actually this stuff can wait. And having a really supportive team around you as well, propping you up and reminding you of that, I think is just so important. I love that. Oh, I just love you. I love talking to you. Let's do this all day. Okay. Laura, thank you so much you. for coming on. I could talk so much more about this. I feel like we could do yeah, another hour or two on yeah, this one subject. Too. But thank you so much for coming. I know, guys, that you'll have found some of that really, really helpful. Definitely. I mean, everything that Laura's kind of referenced today, especially if you're you know, in your younger years and maybe starting out on this journey, there's going to be so much you can take from it. So a huge thank you for all listening, but a bigger thank you to Laura for joining thank you for me. Thank you for having me.